Hi right, guys, um, Joseph put this message up, so I'll just have a quick run through it. Um, first thing I want to say is, like, like I said, today's West model is model of perfect society. Absolute junk. Um, but at the same time, he talks about it himself, we, which is sort of makes it... Yeah. But anyway, Western society is actually fake. Um, most guys are actually aware of that anyway on this channel, because this is where a lot of stuff gets... Re whether it's people that are fed up and moving to the Philippines, whether it's uh, the realities around the MGTOW stuff, or quite simply just seeing that the, the whole system is splintered. Um, but the point being is, the, the complaining here and it, they always put the blame, this is all about the Philippines, they always put the blame on the people and their corrupt government, the culprit of the miserable life, is it really the case? Of course it is. Corruption in the West is the government. Who do you think does it? Um, when the thing you've got right now, look at the changes that I don't even know if you're in the, the Philippines or not. So it's very hard to actually say that because some of your views are very skewed. Um, but the, the thing is, Duterte's done a lot of changes already in the Philippines, and it's been followed by some mayors and other people as well, which have all put a positive injection into the Philippines. So the the fact is, he was voted in by the people. The fact is, he is supported still by the people. The fact is, if he did want to try and run again for government, he would probably get the support and elected in again. The question I was having in the Philippines with people is who's going to be next, and it's very likely his daughter will run next, which would mean there will be a continuation of the government. You know, at the end of the day, the, the new government. Prior to that, you might as well just call them Aquino.com. Because there were all the keynotes in some form, whether they're paid for, whether they're supported by, whatever. And although you focus on the West, there's a bit here I want to stress for you. The biggest problem in the Philippines is not the West, it's the Taipans, the Chinese. Nanoi is the Chinese, She's a, he's a Chinoy. At the same time, when SM and everything else were wanting into China and more access for trading, they offset small businesses in the Philippines so that the small businesses would get um, bombarded with cheap Chinese imports. In exchange, SM and the bigger, bigger boys in the field would actually open up across China. As such, that's exactly what they're doing. That's why smaller businesses will struggle more. At the same time, who's the, who's the fault here? Is it the West? No, it's the Chinese and your own government, which were Chinoids. They're, they're Taipans. Simple as that. It's nothing to do with the West. Um, Philippines has been a Western colony for centuries. Western nations play both colonizer and savior. And as the as time progresses, Philippines adopted Western ideologies, freedom and democracy, vote inequality, a religion, education, and banking system. First thing is there is no such thing as freedom in government and democracy. As I've just said before, they're, they're just buying governments anyway. It's the same in the West. The governments are based on stagnation. They're not on about change. The only time something changes is when it's to their own benefit. This is why Donald Trump and Duterte are upset in the status quo. This is why if you watch ABS-CBN in the Philippines, you will know there is a constant negative feed on Duterte because they're trying to make sure there is no risk of anybody from his party becoming the next president because they had a nice continuation of corrupt governments for a long period of time that Duterte disrupted. Trump's exactly the same in the US. A continuation of corrupt governments. So. Firstly, as you said there, today is the West is the model of perfect society. No, it's not. And as I've said there, the corruption is the same. They always blame the people and their corrupt government. Yes, because the people, like Duterte, have been voted, they voted in Duterte. Which means the people have actually spoken and they have ousted the corrupt ways. And although there is ongoing work, because it's not like as if it could be done in a day, the end, the end of the day, he has pushed that forward. And when you start seeing things like um, Tommy Osmena from Cebu City, the mayor of Cebu City, impounding vehicles and stuff for traffic violations and things, that was not happening five years ago. 
That's happening because of Duterte and the shift in the way people are dealing with governance. People parking illegally is being changed in the Philippines because of that. It's a change in governance. Um, and that's what the bitch you've got to understand is, of course, they're tied together. And it's always sitting there going, well, it's not my fault. It's, um, it's, it's Western society that my government's this or that. Well, they're not Western anyway. Like I said, they're Taipans, they're Chinese. But let's just go down here a bit further. Um, yeah, democracy, like I said, it's about stagnation. Democracy is not a. Yeah, it's farcical. The, the, they're supposed to be representatives of the people but the fact is if you look even at the UK and the way Theresa May gets stabbed in the back by her own party that tells you they're not representing the people because anything that actually disrupts anything costs the taxpayer money so at the end of the day they're not representing anything but themselves that is democracy democratic politicians are self-serving parasites that's it very very few of them actually act to the benefit of the people the only place where I probably say there is a bit more of an interest in democracy is probably well I think Belgium had it but here in Spain they struggle to actually form a government because it's not a two-party system as such it's difficult to get a majority you have meetings with different parties trying to form somebody big enough to actually form the government and it went on here for I think about a year well they just had another government it's now a feminist government here um, but the point being is that is more like a society in the sense that people don't agree with each other that's that is a, probably a true democracy in the fact that nobody ever bloody agrees um, so from that point of view I would say most of these places are not a democracy what you have is stagnation and that's the reality of it um, living in New York City for more than a decade I found out there is no freedom of democracy yeah Welcome to our world. That's just normal. Doesn't matter where you are. The world is like that anywhere. The, you cannot be so selective because without rules and regulations as well, you end up with a cesspit where where the, you may actually have morals and guidance. Doesn't mean your neighbours does. And you end up with problems in whatever going around. Now the, the bit you're on about there about hidden taxes, the SSS. Last year's social security check, a lot of people retire on that stuff. Uh, the city tax, state tax, medical aid, federal tax, bank charges, tickets, car, that is just normal. That's just normal. That is how a society paves the streets. That's how they put street lighting. That's how they put all this infrastructure in there. Now, I don't think we get money for value, don't get me wrong, but it's why that exists. When you pay no taxes and nothing else, and somebody's sitting in a barangay whining that there's no road, well, guess what? Nobody paid for it. That's the reality. <laughs> um, the, the, often the responsibility is the fact that places like the Philippines, for example, even when I was trying to fix the road myself, the, the neighbors got some money off um, a German guy that you were supposed, they were supposed to put into the road and they spent it on Mahjong as well uh, sorry instead and as such the German guy decided well, I'm going to live there because he, he didn't want to walk in the mud I'd already put four trucks of hardcore down but at the same time it just needed a top layer nah I spent it on Mahjong that's the way to go um, so yeah you get taxes because a lot of people don't pay them it's reality the, yeah it's the same thing I grew up with I don't believe in benefit system I don't don't believe in minimum wage. Um, I don't believe in anything that allows a stagnation or encouragement of excessive breeding. Um, and the benefit system encourages it because the more you breed, the more houses. You, know, you move up from a one bed to a two bed to a three bedroom, four bedroom with a garden and everything else. All of the taxpayers' expense. Happy days. Yet the people actually working are paying for it all. So what you're talking about, I agree with you totally on that. But I don't. I, I recognize it and work again. I work to avoid paying it if I can. Uh, the Western world should not lead. Their economy is based on wars, materialism and consumerism. What the West world need, it can be summed up in two words, hypocrisy and deceit. They plan, they play the oppressor and the savior at the same time. They promote proxy wars, build the weapons of mass destruction, arms race, while condemning the acquisition of wep weapons of mass destruction for other states. 
the Western Empire, the we there is no Western Empire. <laughs> it's not singular. It's not singular. What you have, the US has a, was classed as a soft empire, which is basically, it is not done what the, the British did, which was gunboats, where you go in and you just dominate by force. The US has gone in and done it in a different way. It's political, it's very different. But the point is, you, you're seeing the US empire at the moment. It's not Western empire, it's not singular. You couldn't get the US and Germany to agree on most things, for example. You couldn't get the US and France to agree on something. Because the thing is, the reason I mention these is they're more socialist. And as such, many things that go on in the US will not sue these countries. Same with Spain, Italy. Um, so no, there is no Western Empire. It's not singular. Um, the Western Empire, as leaders of the world for centuries, did not install peace. They did. They did. Europe has been peaceful after World War II. But it comes from conflict. And who were they attacked by? They were attacked by Germany and where you are, you're attacked by the Japanese. And who, yeah, you're attacked by the Japanese. It wasn't a Western Empire that attacked the Philippines. Um, instead, every time you open the TV, it's war, war, war. Thanks to their ability to print money, supported by nothing, people are always lured, people always believe in their lies. There is no stop in the Western Empire, global dominance, globally. The most deceiving empire ever existed. All empires deceive. People, I mean, what? I mean, the funny thing is, you've got a very big chip on your shoulder for whatever reason. And I'll tell you now, how would this, the money printing thing, right, is not a false god. But for example, the Egyptians claimed themselves as gods, etc. I'd say that's more deceptive. I'm a demigod. Look at me. You know what? Well, if you don't agree with me, I'll just murder you. Um, so no, it's not the most deceptive. There's been far more deceptive over time. Um, but ultimately, there is no Western Empire here. What you've got is globalization. And globalization is not controlled by one government. Globalization is corporations. Corporations do not um, have borders. They're borderless. They do not need a country. They can manipulate countries. This is the part and parcel of the EU thing, because the EU opened up trade across the whole of Europe. Now, if you looked at things like Aldi and Lidl, Aldi and Lidl didn't exist in the UK. Then suddenly they're everywhere. And at the same time, they've got cheaper produce, because guess what? They don't do branding. Their products are aimed exactly the same as what it would be to buy something that is non-branded yet far cheaper. Now, logically, myself, as you may notice, this t-shirt, there's no logo on it. It's actually well made. I, I wear these because it, they're cool. Not because they look cool, but they're cool in the, the climate. Um, I generally don't buy brand unless there is a reason behind it. For example, electronics wise, JVC or Sony, because I can rely on them. It's not a cheap substandard product, and you have even that you have to make sure you get it from the right place. But at the same time, the the whole materialism stuff is what people are buying into. It doesn't. Philippines buys into it. Don't pretend they don't, because the, the mobile phone is king in the Philippines. And I remember one of the Christmas. Um, oh, it was on GMT. I think it was GMA. Well, they're actually telling people you're going to buy a new iPad for your kid for Christmas. And I just thought, what? You know, try not to say anything bad. But it, well, yeah, most of these people haven't got money for an extra bag of rice for the for the uh, summer. Uh, for the, sorry, for the evening. But instead, yeah, get an iPad. Um, the Western world should not lead. I don't know what, you, what you're expecting. Where do they lead? Are you talking about World Bank? World Bank, anybody that has half a brain will tell you that's corrupt. 
What you have, though, is the corrupt leaders of your nations and other nations that buy into these things for their own benefit. Not for the government's benefit, not for the country's benefit, for their personal benefit. And it's why a lot of countries see money siphoned off by political corruption. And at the end of the day, that will continue. It doesn't matter which country is in charge. The only reason it's in charge is because that exists. They can manipulate and buy people. The only way you can stop that is having people like Duterte that are not so easy to move. Um, because they can reduce it. Every country will have corruption, regardless of how great or wonderful they are. They will always have corruption. Because that's humans. This is why socialism doesn't work. Because socialism should be based on everyone pulling together for the benefit of all. But in reality, the biggest ones that I know that are pro-socialist don't want to work at all. They think working is a choice. And as you said yourself in here, you don't think you should have to work. As you say yourself, now this sounds like a satanic, satanic offer in exchange for one soul. I personally don't like that. Don't like the working part to obtain riches in return for my soul. Working to pay your bills. Well done. You don't. You want other people to carry you through life. You're. You're. You must be a socialist, without a doubt. Well, that's all. It's mindset. Um. While people should stop telling other people how to live, we Filipinos live the life the way God wanted us to. Garbage. Utter garbage. Right. Don't put yourself on a pedestal. Here's a bit of reality. You're lying to yourself if you think that's true. The child abuse in the Philippines is rife. It's, I mean, I, I've talked to people, I've talked to pastors, I've talked to priests about it. Because you know what? In the church, they're sick of it. Because the thing is, your church that protects these people, and it does, will not throw them out of the church. Um, they have to leave of their own own free will which means that they just continue the abuse they just move to another church that is your God-fearing system um, the same is many of the, you mentioned suicide in there as well suicide happens in the Philippines but your same God-fearing system will actually lie on the reports because it removes you from burial rights so what they do is they'll put it down as an accident or something else on the police report so that people can be buried I hope that answers your question because I'm just giving you some reality here. Here in the Philippines, we rely on something that is not seen. We, we like fairy tale stories. We believe in Cinderella story. Our faith belongs to God because our surroundings do not really offer much hope. The reality is grim. The future is always uncertain. Our daily life is full of troubles. For instance, the Filipino family is most likely broke. We'll never plan on a future unlike the West. Number of kids, age to marry, going to college, etc. Number of kids, there you go. What's the average family? Because it's not two. But you do have in the Philippines a growing middle class which are one to two children because they are actually progressing. Because what you're looking at in the Philippines is the UK 150 years ago. Now I'm going to bring in your God-fearing um, nation because the same Catholic Church was the biggest locker of people in poverty for London. The, the slums and these vulgar, vile places that people were living in severe poverty in London, who were their landlords? The Catholic Church. The church was responsible for the worst areas to live in. You go in the Philippines, where are the ivory towers in every area? It's the church. You can have the poorest area. Are they saying, no, don't, we'll build a very simple church will actually invest the money in actually developing the area, putting some sanitation in. Shall we um, have something that benefits the people? No. They, they take their godlike status that is blindly followed. Because do, you do not separate between God and church. Church is parasitical. They have sold you a book that is followed blindly. At the same time, believing in something should not believe in a church. An ivory tower is not needed for someone's faith. My belief in this is why I'm more in line with being a Protestant rather than a Catholic. 
because your understandings and beliefs from the book is your choice and how you interpret it. Catholics, on the other hand, are being sold it and literally sold it. Get the play round. Um, we serve family members, even if it's unbearable. Grandmas take care of unwanted children so their daughters can pursue a better life. There you go. Excess breeding. Children. If you've got too many kids in a family, the only person who's responsible for that is you. If you cannot afford to feed your family, the only person responsible is you. The reality is, the excess population is caused by people excess breeding. That is it. But it's one of those fundamental things that A, nobody wants to talk about globally, but secondly, the Catholic Church blocking the um, health bill and the contraceptions and all this sort of stuff has proactively encouraged poverty and locking people into it because of people that are religious and being blindly told don't worry about it, God will provide and all this sort of stuff. Reality is, the only people responsible for that is yourself because you should actually wake up and realize you're being sold a tale as you said yourself, fairy tale story. So why are you believing in it? It's just stupid. You need to actually turn around and take responsibility for yourself. The person who's responsible for you is you. Don't blame the church. Don't blame um, the West. It's you. When things go wrong for me, I just accept it and move on. I don't sit there and go, oh, it's the white man's fault, the way you do here. I don't sit there and go, oh, it's Western's fault, when actually, the, predominantly, it's actually the Chinese. But on top of that, even this, you're sitting there going, well, we're better because we believe in God. Well, you, you're not believing in God. You're following the church. Now, if the Bible was written by a God or whatever, why the hell are you following some salesman that is building a big house for themselves? It's beyond me. Um, anyway, elders are taking care of even the hospitals demand our religious bills. We, we in return lend money to meet the hospitals demand. We pay our own bills as well. The difference is, like when I'm in the Philippines, I put a saving fund together and I'm aware a lot of people cannot do that in the Philippines. But at the same time, a lot of people will go out and buy fighting cocks, play mahjong, gamble and drink, at the same time go, my child's sick and I've got no money for medicine. Yes, I wonder why. Because you're the same Victorian England. That was the same during the Victorian times. The difference is, Western society has evolved, well, a lot of it has evolved out of that. That's why the 2.4 children family exists. This is why the nuclear family exists. Because a lot of this stuff comes down to the fact that overpopulation and <coughs> condensed areas, breed disease, they cause poverty. And it's very basic stuff on how things can be changed if people actually change the way they look at things. The plastics in the rivers, the plastics in the streets, the single-use plastics everywhere in the Philippines, along with the way people litter, burn plastics on neighbors' lots, throw things over the fence, um, steal rebars from construction sites next door and stuff. It's all part and parcel of the same problem. Urinating in public part and parcel of the same problem. Avoiding paying tax, avoiding um, developing the nation. Because at the end of the day, the country can only change if people change. And that's it. Um, actually, I mentioned this already, I'm sure I did. Um, here in the Philippines, I'm aware. Part of the cycle of life, by faith, the choice lives because there's life or death. Filipinos have always choose life. Unlike the West, suicide is rampant. Philippines is rampant. Like I said, it's the birth rights, uh, sorry, the death rights. People are having the right to a funeral, etc. So you will find that it is rampant. I mean, even in the, well, probably about two streets away, there was a girl, a girl about, I think she was eight years old, she hung herself because she couldn't afford the school project. So tell me it's not rampant, it's just up to nonsense. You, you need to take off the rose tinted glasses and actually look at reality. Same with people killing each other. Whether you're pro or anti-deterity, 
the figures are being what 2,000 homicides and at the same time before Duterte it was about 2,000 homicides and that's God God fearing loving people wake up <laughs> as we face near death life is never again how much money we have it is about money why do you think people kill other people it's purely money uh, it's never about how many diplomas hang on the wall it's never about how many medals we gather in life so what you're saying is do not aspire or try to be anything other than what you are and then you can sit and blame the West and everything for your failures well the nation would never improve if that's that is the way people think but in reality I'm thankful that the way you're thinking is part of a minority most Filipinos actually want to get on in life most Filipinos I've met do not just accept that the life they're in is the only life they've got they get up every day and they try to find or make a future get through the day and try and do something accepting defeat at day one you're going back to you just said nobody commit suicide well guess what that mentality is exactly what causes that but anyway here we go because of brainwashing Western people hardly distinguish the right from wrong you just I've just read and explained your own stuff to you um, in the West the government dictates what is right and what is wrong powered by media hence the groups like MGTOW feminism and political correctness you, you're, you're a very strange person on this stuff MGTOW and feminism are very different things the point being is, this is part of democracy. Feminism, MGTOW, political correctness, and many other things all follow one thing. Democratic process, in the sense that even if we don't have a good government, the discussion and these topics and debating it and highlighting these issues is how you form change. So, you going blindly and just saying, well, I just believe in God and it's the West fault for everything. Um, well, there's only one person whose fault it is, it's yourselves. Because everybody else is debating, discussing it. Everybody is getting on there and saying, well, I'm not happy with this or whatever. And they can see the writing on the wall. And <coughs> it's not brainwashing, because it can't be brainwashing, can it? If you've got multiple sources of information that are not skewed in the sense that you can take the left and the right and the middle and then make your own mind up. That is not brainwashing. Brainwashing is when you turn around and do a flag, flag ceremony, so you must follow that flag blindly. If you go against it, you're going against the nation. Da, da, da. That's brainwashing because they've removed all your ability to think. You're not allowed to think. And even if you wanted to, you're not allowed to say anything. Now I'm not on about the Philippines, I'm talking about in general, that's, that's what happens when people get dragged into wars or whatever, um, but it, it gets used in so many ways um, for political agenda, but ultimately the discussions between different groups is actually part and parcel of recognising that the system needs to change, simple as that, that is democracy. Um, now it doesn't mean it doesn't mean it will change, but the whole point is the debates can and do happen, which gets back to there is no freedom of speech. Well, there's no freedom of speech in the sense of complete, completely open and hating people and whatever. Um, but you can debate things. Debating is completely different to that. Um, in reality, truth is truth, never grey. A lie is always deceit or never truth. Deceit just evolved into complex disease printed in your genes or behavior and absurd attitudes. Now you're, now you're genetically engineering people. Where do you get this stuff from? Um, as we face near death, life is never about how much money we have, it's never about how many diplomas hang on. Da, da, da. Um, it's always been about money. You've just said yourself. When you're dying and in the hospital in the Philippines, the medical bill is a problem. So of course it's about money. In, in the West, you have medical insurance. Of course it's about money. Doesn't matter how you look at it, you're still having to pay a bill for your medical cover. 
Um, and then when you leave people behind, I mean, I suppose you, you're completely unaware about the number of shootings and stuff with family arguing over inheritance. No, it doesn't happen in the Philippines. Bloody well does. The amount of people I know that have shot each other and done stupid stuff over who got what out of their grandfather dying or whatever, it's horrendous. It's horrendous. The, I mean, they're relatives for goodness sake. If I was in that sort of scenario with my relatives, I'd just say, keep my bit, I'm not interested. Why the hell would you want to kill your own blood over a piece of land that you probably neither of you will get if you shoot each other because you're a pair of idiots? Answer that. Uh, I'm not saying that Filipinos will go to heaven. What I am saying is our situ situation gives us no choice but to put our faith where it belongs to God. Many people don't. They use it as an excuse. As I've said before, gambling all your money, drinking it, um, spending it on drugs, shabu and whatever, and then going my kids sick. Is God going to provide? Because that's what they'll say. But they had the money. They wasted it. Um, I'm saying that God favours us that the line we walk for generations is the right path. No matter how much we fall to our action dictates what we do to others may, may live. Most of us live to get three meals a day. We hardly can afford luxury. Therefore, excessiveness is not an option. Materialism is not an option. That's why fate guides us and also gives us no choice to be tied to the power of money. Ten million overseas Filipinos. That's tied to money. That's improvement. That's people want to move forward. You're speaking as if you're speaking for the nation. You have a very narrow view. And I think you actually want to spend more time talking to other Filipinos. The reason so many Filipinos are abroad is they want to change their lives. They want to improve their lives. The same as if you sit and talk with people about the political um, arena, you will see the changes and understand the changes. I'm not sure if you're still in the US, I'm not sure how long you've been overseas, but even with my last trip to Cebu, I could see the changes that the authority is doing. In the same way, I'm seeing the changes that uh, Tommy Osmana, the mayor of Cebu, is doing. He's trying to inject some positive changes. The Turtis put in a new air, airport terminal and a new bridge from Mactan to, Mactan to uh, Cebu Island. At the same time, you've got Tommy Asmena impounding vehicles and going after traffic violations and stuff to improve the traffic in Cebu. Also, getting people to actually abide by something that they, many people assume is only a choice, which is the laws. Um, so the point being is, there is a lot of positive stuff going on in the Philippines. There's a lot of positive change going on. And I know Tommy Osmena this weekend has cancelled the Ironman event for the um, SRP route. SRP is a, like a, it's a, it's a road, I think it's about four lanes on each side. But there's people already complaining he's cancelled it. But as he said, the the reality is there's other places that can have the tournament and that road is important for commuters they quite simply couldn't accommodate if they shut the two lanes of the road in fact I think they said they, they've had some fatalities before with car accidents when they did it so the point being is things are changing in the Philippines now what's important here is recognizing deterity is somebody that has his own view on things. He's very nationalistic in a true nationalist way. He does want things to change in a, a positive way. This is why he's investing in things like infrastructure that has been left decaying for a long period of time. Um, and my discussions when I was in the Philippines was relating to the transition of when Duterte finishes, because if, if he, he goes, who's going to replace him? Because he's going to leave a massive void. At the same time, the Barangay elections were on, and the corruption that exists there is being felt, because the parties that were actually the pro-federalism were finding that the Barangays, from what I've heard, so this is from what I've heard from various people, they were spending 50,000 pesos, uh, sorry, yeah, it's about 50,000 pesos per Barangay. Um, from those that support past parties to, be able to make it very uh, open. 
um, because they're trying to secure the election for the for the presidential election. It works out about 500 pesos per person. Normally, in the they corrupt. Um, they're giving people somewhere between 100 and 350 pesos per vote. Um, but this time, they've actually pushed it to 500 per person because that's how much they're trying to force the election. Now, that shows you democracy at work. Demonocracy. Because that is your previous governments trying to reinforce the fact that they need to win the next election. Because they will continue. They will sit there in the background even though they lost in the last election because they have already built it up over a long period of time. Not just in the times that they've been in the elections, but also from their family's wealth. But that's the point. You need, you need to understand that this is why it begins with the power of the people and the recognitions. Um, because the guys that were actually trying to run against these guys pumping out 50,000 pesos per barangay had 3,000 pesos, which is for their campaign funds, not for giving people literally money in their hands. Um, so yes, I mean, I'm, this stuff I know quite a bit about because I do spend time with people that are political leaders and other and local leaders for different reasons. Uh, predominantly, I'm involved with like I said, do stuff on waste and some charity projects. But ultimately, we talk because quite simply, I am not involved in the elections. I'm not involved in. I can't be bought. Or whatever. I can't even vote. And I'm not standing on a stage shaking hands and that. I don't do any of that stuff um, but at the same time people talk to me because quite simply well, it's not going to go anywhere I mean it goes on here but I haven't said who I was talking to but anyway I hope that answers your question but the whole point is simply don't just accept that life is what it is you can change it Duterte is doing it to an entire nation if you're not happy with what's in your life do something about it now, guys going to the Philippines and marrying women there, that's part of globalization. In the same way, 10 million overseas Filipinos is part of globalization. You cannot say, white guy, don't marry Filipina, but I want to go and work in New York, as you're doing. Because you say, no, you go back to your country, and you, you won't, if you want. <laughs> it all becomes completely racial. The, the point being is globalization means people can go come and go as they please. Now, yes, there are always laws, rules, immigration problems, and everything else that's um, entangled in globalization. But ultimately, the the point being is, it's possible. You're not saying you can't do that purely because of race or um, how that. I feel that it's unfair. Now, if you brought an argument to me today which is what I'll push out there, is taking all the top surgeons and stuff out of the Philippines and uh, brain draining it, which is what the NHS does in the United Kingdom. You could have a good debate with me on that. Because at the same time, they're getting ripped off by the NHS and the agencies. Um, because long term, they can't settle in the, uh, in the UK because many of the nurses, for example, um, will not meet the five-year criteria salary-wise, which means they can't settle. Um, but at the same time, they're getting ripped off and double-charged by agencies. And the NHS knows about it because they have tried to combat it, but it's bloody difficult. Um, but also, all the surgeons, the plastic surgeons, the um, A&E people, the critical care people, all those people that have gone abroad, that brain drain, is something the Philippines needs to combat. And part of that for me would be quite simply encourage people to stay. And I do know um, Duterte with his pay rises for a lot of police and whatever is combating corruption. This would be another step. I mean, it may have done it already, but really you want the, the best and the brightest to stay, not to leave. Because every time you, like say for example, you have eight people in critical care. Six of them go to the West. Two people are training the next level. Well, the next level are not as good as the last ones. Why? Because they haven't got a decade worth of experience each. They qualified last month. What you're trying to do is get the ones that are 10, 20 years to stay. Because fundamentally, their brains and knowledge and experience are the ones that should be making the healthcare system in the Philippines 
much much better you're producing a lot of nurses and doctors or whatever but bring the standards up go the same way as South Korea because that's what South Korea did that's how South Korea changed it, it focused on doctors because there's always a demand for doctors um, I mean that's why I find it quite funny when people argue about the the UK and they talk about the UK and it's um, dentists and they don't want the poles now there but people forget the Polish dentists are one of those fundamental cornerstones of the United Kingdom where they, they were an important asset to the United Kingdom that people willfully neglect when they're saying we don't want all these Polish builders and whatever. It wasn't just builders, was it? We got their healthcare guys. Now, that would be a better discussion, the, the healthcare system. Because I do think the Philippines needs to take more control over what people go overseas. I'm not saying about controlling and dictating or whatever. It needs to encourage them, A, to earn more. But seeing uh, seeing Cebu Dock University uh, with Tommy Osmena, I think it was last week, was a Range Rover and a Aston Martin parked in the ambulance bays. Some doctors may be getting paid too much as well. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching.